Welcome back. So far, we have discussed probability spaces. Right? So, we, have, we said the sample space is the set of all possible outcomes of a random experiment. We said that, uh, so we then created a sigma algebra of events on the sample space and we uh, then we defined probability measures on a measurable space. Uh, so, it turned out that omega is countable assigning probability measures is possible to it is possible to assign probability measures to all subsets of omega whereas, when omega is uncountable such as 0 1 interval or infinite coin toss model in those cases it was an uncountable sample space. Uh, in that case uh, we had to settle for a smaller sigma algebra and assign probabilities right. So, now we so, so far we have completed that one section right that say uh, that just talks about what probability spaces are and how this probability measures are assigned to a measurable space. Now, we begin a new, new section okay, called, uh, so this is on conditional probability. Okay. So, I will start with definition. So, we have a probability space omega f p. Okay, so, everything, so now that we know probability spaces, everything we do will start with an omega f p. Okay. We have a sample space, a sigma algebra on the sample space and some probability measure p on omega f ok. So, this is a probability space uh, let b be an event such that p b is greater than 0 definition. the conditional probability of A given B is defined as Okay. So, what you see you are fixing a particular event B that is so what do I mean by B is an event I mean that B is an element of F the sigma algebra F right I am given this probability space. So, I consider some B belonging to F such that the probability of B is strictly positive. Okay. So, it is it is a set whose probability measure is not 0. Okay. Uh, so, and we then we say so and A is another F measurable set okay. A is another event. We say the conditional probability of A given B right this is what we are trying to define this is the first time we are seeing this. So, this is the definition right. So, we define the conditional probability of A given B denoted like this. So, A vertical line B okay, vertical line B that is defined as probability of A intersection B divided by probability of B okay. This is by definition okay, there is no Y right definitions are definitions that is it they just be taken. Uh, so, intuitively of course, you, you will see that we are simply scaling the, so you are fixing an event B and you are looking at the probability that A and B happen and scaling it by probability of B right that is what is intuitively happening. Uh, so, you see why this condition is important right if not the denominator will be 0 right. So, you have to condition on events of non 0 probability first of all you have to condition only on F measurable sets not on arbitrary subsets of 
omega and you also have to condition only on events which have strictly positive probability okay. So, caution caution so we cannot condition on 0 probability events. So, what I am saying is the event to the right of this vertical line must be non zero probability. See, this A can be anything, A can be any f measurable set, but what is on the right side of this vertical line must be a non zero probability uh, event. Okay. So, this is this is a fact that is I mean it is very easy to see why you need it, otherwise, this is meaningless. Right, the denominator being 0 is meaningless, but very often uh, sometimes you can get into uh, trouble with this right sometimes you miss miss out on this ok. Uh, so, for example, if you are talking about let us say omega let us say 0 1 interval f is Borel and p is your uniform Lebesgue measure you cannot for example, condition on say rationals right why because rationals have zero probability measure under that uniform Lebesgue measure the, the Lebesgue measure right. So, you cannot ask a question like oh what is the probability that uh, my number is between 0 and half given that it is a rational right understand what I am saying. So, if I am talking about A as the event that the number is between 0 and half and B is the event that the number is rational and I am talking about just the Lebesgue measure. So, that question is meaningless you should never ask such a question and there is no answer to that question ok. You can only condition on you cannot condition on Cantor set for example, because you will you if you have not already shown it you will show in your homework that Cantor set has 0 measure right. You should not say what is the probability that my number is between 0 and half given that it is a Cantor number no right there is no such the question is meaningless you cannot answer it ok. Actually there is, there is actually a uh, there is a paradox which I think is called Borel's paradox or Borel Kolmogorov paradox or something. So, which takes a sphere and asks about the conditional distribution of uh, the angle the polar angle or whatever given that you are on one of the diameters ok with a uniform measure on the sphere right and you get multiple answers just like we saw an earlier paradox Bertrand's paradox right. So, this is another paradox which gives you multiple answers and why is that because you are conditioning on a 0 measure set right. So, you can look that up if you want. So, you can get into all sorts of uh, inconsistent and paradoxical situations if you do not if you are not careful about this ok. theorem let b in f then p of dot given b. Uh, so, this p of dot given b which is a mapping from f to 0 1 is a probability measure on uh, on omega ok. So, what are we saying this theorem says if you fix some uh, event with positive probability then you take. So, you take you fix this b and you look at probability of dot given b by me by dot I mean you will take arguments from f right and you and this is the definition right. Uh, what you can show is that this 
guy is a valid probability measure on omega f okay so you have to prove this right this is a theorem so you have to prove this right how do you prove it you have to prove how many things two things three things actually right for a probability measure so you have to prove that uh, yeah if you input if you input empty set here you should get zero if you input sample space here you should get one and finally countable additivity of disjoint events right so the first two are trivial right if your a were to be null a null intersection b will be null right zero by something which is positive is zero similarly if uh, a is the whole sample space then omega intersection b will be b so you will get one right finally to verify countable additivity so if you want so the first two are easy right uh, one and two uh, properties are easy right Uh, to show countable additivity, consider A i belongs to F i equal to one comma two comma dot dot dot. which are disjoint right i have to consider a countable collection of disjoint events and show that this set function has countable additivity property right so you have to so you have something like that right this I have to show is equal to sum over i equal to 1 to infinity p of a given b right that is what I have to show. Huh. So, this is equal to by definition so I, I, I invoke this ok this is equal to p of uh, b and here I have p of union i equals 1 through infinity a i intersected with b right. Now, there is an identity a set theoretic identity right. So, if you have something like a union b intersection c right it is a intersection c union b intersection c. So, but except this is a infinite countably infinite union. So, you can use that set theoretic identity to get probability of uh, so this is this union intersection B ok. So, now I will have union of A i intersection B correct. Now, A i's are disjoint therefore, A intersection B let us if you want to call the C i those C i's will, so will also be disjoint. So, my P is a probability measure on my original space right. So, P satisfies countable additivity correct. So, then so the by countable additivity of P you have this is equal to sum over i equals 1 through infinity. Uh, probability of a i intersection b divided by probability of b right and that is exactly what you want right this is equal to sum over i equals 1 through infinity probability of a i given right
fine everyone okay any questions very elementary proof i just did it so that it just took two minutes so i did it right yes the even is tosing a point and tosing a die so the untaking a intersection getting a head well 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 okay so you have to see all of this happens see uh, you cannot you are not operating in two different probability spaces right there's only one probability space omega fp right so you're not talk, talking about one experiment involving tossing of a coin another involving throwing of a die right so that's not the scenario you want to consideration so, so yeah you are talking about uh, a given experiment given so your a random experiment its sample space the sigma algebra the probability measure everything is fixed okay now you are conditioning on a particular event b with positive probability and i am saying that whatever i defined here is a valid probability measure for any b with positive probability okay that's all i have said so if you if you want to consider, consider for example the uh, throw of a die uh, f you can take it as omega is 1 2 1 2 3 4 5 6 f is 2 power omega because it's a discrete sample space p is let's say uh, the uniform 1 by 6 on each of them uh, you can take as an example you can take b to be the event that an even number shows up so you can look for the probability that uh, given that it's an even number what is the probability that it is 4 something like that right you can calculate it right okay okay so, so i think we'll uh, go go and do some properties of uh, conditional probability so we did proper properties of probability measure i probably listed some seven or eight properties right so uh, see this is a valid probability measure on omega f right so any property satisfied by probability measures is satisfied by this guy also probability of a dot given b satisfies all those properties because it's a valid probability measure all right so we will put down a few which are more specific okay i have i have three actually one let b i Let's say i equals one, two, dot, 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 be a partition of omega. So what does that mean? Ha! Huh, so it just means that. Uh, so i e it just means union b i equal to omega and b i intersection b j. Equal to null for i is not equal to j, right? And let a be some event. So these are also f measurable. Suppose. p of b i is greater than 0 for all i okay then probab uh, probability of a Is equal to sum over i equals one through infinity uh, probability of a given b i times 
probability of B i. Okay. So this is this this is the law. So this law has a name. You know what name it is? Total probability. The law of total probability, right? So we are looking at a partition of the sample space by f measurable sets. So B i's are f measurable, and they have, they form a partition of omega. And A is any f measurable set. Then you can write the probability of A as the probability of A conditioned on B times probability of B sum over all these partitions. Okay. So in particular, there is a very particular version of this, which is uh, quite useful. So if B is any event with positive probability, B and B complement always partition the sample space. Right? Very trivially, very trivial to show. So therefore, you can write. So if in particular, if B is an F such that probability of B is greater than 0 but less than 1 okay so i am saying 0 less than pb less than 1 okay then probability of a a is of course your any f measurable set it can be written as probability of a given b times probability of b plus probability of A given B complement times probability of B complement. Okay. Uh, this is a corollary of this total probability law because uh, B and B complement partition the sample space and I have, so I can condition on this because B has positive probability. And I can condition on B complement also because B does not have probability equal to 1, it has strictly less than 1. So, probability of B complement is strictly positive. Okay. So, here I need both. Okay. So, how do you prove the law of total probability? Uh, P, this is so this is equal to probability of a intersection b i right so the r h s so if you want to prove this here the r h s proof see if you consider this probability expression uh, this probability of a given b i is probability of a intersection b i over probability of b i so it will cancel this out so you will have r h s is equal to sum over i equals 1 through infinity uh, probability a i sorry a intersection b i right. Now b i's are disjoint right. So a intersection b i's are also disjoint. So by countable additivity of p I have this guy this I can write as probability of union a i or oh sorry a intersection b i agreed. Now again I use uh, this rule right the set theoretic identity which says this will be equal to probability of a intersection union b i but union b i is equal to 
uh, well, uh, uh, yeah, so this is equal to uh, this is omega, correct? This guy is omega. So I have a intersection omega which is a that is all, okay. Oh, sorry, probability of uh, so this is a intersection omega, this is probability of a, correct, which is what I want. Any questions? So I, this this has uh, so a typical example of the law of total probability is when you have these balls and urns experiments, right? So let's say you have uh, let's say you have n urns, okay, and each of them has uh, let's say urn i has n i red balls and mi blue balls or something and you are looking at so you pick an urn at random and then you pick a ball at random okay with let's say uniform probability then you can talk about uh, so you know that the probability of choosing the ith urn is whatever 1 over n in that case and probability that you choose a red ball given that you chose a particular urn i is n n i over n i plus mi so you can look you can calculate the unconditional probability of picking a red ball right so that is the kind of law this is saying right so you first condition on what urn you are picking and then you uh, look at the probability of picking a red ball then you can compute the total probability of picking a red, red ball in this experiment so that is where this is useful and uh, it doesn't have to be a, it can be a countable it doesn't even have to be a finite set of urns it can have a is uh, an uncountable uh, countably infinite set of ones right okay is this property okay any, any questions Number two, property number two. Let A belong to F with probability of A greater than zero and B i i equals one to dot 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 B as in 1. So, by B i as in 1 I mean that B i's are a partition of the sample space with each having positive probability okay. Then probability of B i given a is equal to probability of a given b i times probability of b i divided by sum over j probability of a given b j times probability of b j okay. So, notice that now I am computing I am not computing probability of so I am not starting with probability of a given b right I am computing b i given a right. So, on the right side of a vertical line I have a now so I should ensure that a has positive probability, but he all over here I have the b i is a, the b j s are on the right of the vertical line, so they should all have positive probability. Okay, so then I have this relationship. Okay, this is a property. What is this called? Bayes rule.
it is a very trivial actually it is a very trivial identity uh, if you this what is in the denominator is p of a right by the law of total probability. So, you bring this here it becomes what it will become probability of ha b i intersection a and this is also probability of b i intersection a. So, you are just writing p of a intersection b in two different ways right. So, there is really very little to Bayes rule it is not uh, some very uh, it is a very straightforward application of the definition of uh, this conditional probability ok. It looks big because you are applying total probability in the denominator. Uh, so, you bring this here it will become probability of B i intersection a which is also the numerator right ok. So, uh, in the urn and ball example so you are looking at the probability of so given so given that you got a red ball what is the probability it came from urn number i right. So, given you are picking from urn number i you know the probability of a red ball, but so post facto you are telling oh I got a red ball meaning a, a is the event that I got a red ball, oh I got a red ball, but what is the probability that I got it from urn number 27 right. So, it this is called so because you are asking this post facto question this is called a a posteriori probability ok. A posteriori just means that after the fact ok as opposed to a priori which is means prior right. Uh, yeah, so, this you can compute uh, there are lots of examples you can compute this for ok. So, but mathematically it is a very simple application of conditional probability definition. And finally, I will put down one property, the property number 3. Let A i in F i equals 1 2 dot 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 then probability of intersection i equals 1 through infinity a i is equal to probability of a 1 product A uh, in so intersection uh, J equals one through I minus one. Okay, intersection blah 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 A J. Okay, as long as the conditional probabilities are defined ok. So, I am considering the probability of a countable intersection now ok. So, this is the probability of the countable intersection of a bunch of events I am writing it in terms of Uh, a conditional probability product of a bunch of conditional probabilities. So, why have I said as long as the conditional probabilities are defined? I have to have see each thing that I am conditioning on here must have positive probability right. How do you prove this? Yeah, induction. induction. So, when can you use induction? 
when you are proving a statement about the natural numbers, right. Induction is always used to prove a statement Pn about natural numbers, right. Is this a statement about natural numbers? No, so you cannot use induction. So, you have to use continuity of probabilities, okay. So, you what you can do is uh, LHS. So, if LHS is equal to by continuity of probability I can write this as limit n tending to infinity probability intersection i equals 1 through n a i correct continuity of probabilities yes. And now I can use so now this is a finite intersection, right? So I can write this as I can keep the limit and write this as probability of a one times product i equals two to n all that right all that right and then if you and then you are sending n to infinity in the product right so that will become this okay you will get so you are just taking p i p so for n equal to 2 you will have a probability of a1 times probability of a2 given a1 so if you had 3 for example it will have uh, a2 given a1 probability of a3 given a1 intersection a2 right Th that is by just by definition right. So, you just figure this out okay. But the key step I want to emphasize is the continuity of probabilities that is the key step right everything else is just definition of conditional probability okay. Yeah, so, this just says that <coughs> if you know a bunch of finite conditional probability, so this is all a given a finite intersection right, then you can compute the probability of this countably in finite intersection okay. Okay, any questions? Okay, if there are any, no more questions on conditioning, I will go to the next topic. Okay, it's a very short topic. This conditioning. The next topic is a very important topic. Independence. Okay. So we're talking about independence of events. So, as usual you are given a probability space okay. So, this independence of events is defined as follows okay. First we will define independence of two events and then we will go on to define independence of arbitrary collection of events okay.
events A and B are said to be independent under P. or simply independent when the measure p is unambiguous measure p is uh, if probability of A intersection B is equal to probability of A times probability of P. So, you are given two events right A and F are A and B are both elements of F. Okay. You say that A and B are independent under measure P under the probability measure P if probability of A intersection B is equal to probability of A times probability of B. Okay. So, I, the reason I have said independent under P is because if you have some other measure on it, like some P prime is another measure on omega f, the same events A and B may not be independent. right? So, two events A and B may be independent under some measure P on this probability space. If you put some other measure on it, they may not be independent depending on what that measure is. right? So, strictly speaking you should say A and B are independent under that particular probability measure. right? So, what I am saying is whether or not two events are independent depends on the probability measure. But what, so here I am clarifying that we will only say they are independent as long as it is very clear what probability measure we are talking about. So, every time I will not be saying oh it is independent under P. right? So, if it is very clear what probability measure I am talking about if there is only one measure or it is completely clear then I will not keep saying under this particular measure. Okay, I will just say independent that is it A and B are independent. So, it is actually a very simple definition with the probability of the intersection of two events products out into the probability of A times probability of B then A and B are said to be independent events. Okay. Now, this is the definition and this is the only definition. Okay. Uh, so, do not take any other notion you may have of independence uh, from now on. Okay. So, you may have some uh, some intuitive meta understanding of independence of events. right? You may say oh if uh, the probability the occurrence of A has nothing to do with the probability occurrence of B or something like that. right? All that is misleading. Okay. Do not take any of that. So, you should always say, so you should always just keep this definition probability of A intersection B is equal to probability of A and probability of B then A and B are independent. So, uh, this is the definition. So, if probability of B is greater than 0, note that if A and B are independent, then probability of A given B is equal to simply probability of A. Okay. If probability of B is bigger than 0, okay, then probability of A given B is simply equal to probability of A if A and B are independent. So, why cannot we take this as the definition of independence? Because this is not even defined if probability of B is 0. Right. So, this is the thing to take right and if probability of b is greater than 0 then this is true but this is a consequence of the definition okay this is not the definition okay yes so a definition always has if and only if you can think of it that way okay so
So, the definition there is no need to say if and only if, only in theorems you say if and only if, right, to prove two, two directions. See, you do not know what independence means, right, you have not even heard of it so far, let us say. I am telling you what it is, definition is what something that tells you, right, you say that a, two events are independent if the probability of the intersection is equal to the product of the unconditioned probabilities. So, the reason I the reason that I cautioned you about taking this definition and only this definition is because uh, it many students have some intuitive understanding of independence which can sometimes put get you into trouble, right. So, you can say oh the occurrence of let us say A and B are independence if people often say if the occurrence of A does not reveal anything about the occurrence of B, right, things like that. It is not true, okay, all that is not correct, okay. I want to make that perfectly clear. All those same kind of intuitions hold if only both events have positive probability, okay. That, that intuition that oh the occurrence of A says nothing about the occurrence of B, whatever that means, that intuition is that is actually a wrong statement in the, the, because for example, uh, let me give you an example. Let us say that you are working with uh, 0, 1, Borel and Lebeg, our favorite measure, right, 0, 1, Borel, Lebeg. Let me say A is the event of a rational, let me say B is the event of a irrational, okay. Are they independent? A is the event that it is rational, B is the event that it is irrational. So, probability of A intersection B is, A intersection B is null, right, there is no number which is both rational and irrational. So, this will be 0 and what about this? will also be 0 because probability of rational is 0, right. So, are, so if I ask you, oh the I throw a dart on the 0, 1 interval under the uniform Lebesgue measure, under the Lebesgue measure, uh, is the event that it is a rational independent of the event that it is an irrational? The answer should be, answer should be what? Is, is, are the two events independent? Yes, right, because that is what the definition says, but if you go by, oh, but if I know that a ra if, if I know that the dart lands on a rational number, I know that it is not an irrational number, right. So, the occurrence of A straight away rules out the occurrence of B. So, it says everything about B, right. Once A is known, B is known completely, right, but still they are independent, right, which is why I am saying that you should not confuse these notions of occurrence of A, it says nothing about occurrence of B, all that is misleading, it can get you into trouble, okay. This is a serious matter, right, people give these kind of meta definitions very often, right, I want to uh, urge you not to do that anymore, okay, this is the definition. So, you can be to probability so, no, so that intuition is by and large okay if both events have positive probability, okay. So, let me ask you a question, can an event A be independent of itself? I am taking this argument to an extreme, right. So, the occurrence of A says everything about the occurrence of A, right. Can an event A be independent of itself? If it is, if it only with null set, a sample space. So, you are not applying the definition, you should simply apply the definition, right. So, I am saying that A is independent of A, th then I have to uh, say probability of A intersection A equal to probability of A times probability of A, which means P of A is equal to P of A squared, which means P of A should be 0 or P of A should be 1, right. Can you say anything more? You cannot say that A should be null or A should be sample space, not true, not true, because A can be Cantor set or something under the Lebesgue measure right or A can be irrationals, probability is 1, right. So, the even under the Lebesgue measure, the probability of getting an irrational is independent of itself, right. That is true, okay, there is nothing fishy going on, it is actually true, right. So, that is I want to caution you against these kind of folk definitions, they are not correct, okay, this is the correct definition.